Good day to you from the Newberry Church of Christ. I'd like to share with you a little bit of thought today on a subject that is really bothering to a lot of people. It troubles them in their life, and that is the subject of the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath? Uh, what was it for? When was it made? What do we have to go by the Sabbath? And honestly, we can realize the Sabbath was not uh, given to man in the beginning. The Sabbath was given to them in Mount Sinai. I, I say that because the Bible teaches that. The Bible teaches that the, the, the Ten Commandments, the law, was given to them there on Mount Sinai. I want you to look with me at Deuteronomy. We're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, where, there, uh, where Moses is talking, rehearsing the law to them again before they went into the, the promised land. And he's talking to these people about what he had happened some 40 years almost before. He said this, The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horan. That's Mount Sinai. He, he, made, he made what? It says, The Lord our God made a covenant with us. He said, The Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us. Those who are here today, all of us are alive. The, the covenant was made then. It was not made before that. Now, someone said, well, the Lord rested on the Sabbath day. But they forget to realize that when the Lord rested on the Sabbath day, who recorded that? Moses recorded that. He recorded that in Mount Sinai when he received the law. He received the revelation of everything that was set forth in God's word. So he said, now this is what the Lord done. And this is what he has given us that we are to do. And they was to rest on, on, that, on that day. So oftentimes people get mixed up when they read all of the, uh, of the Old Testament. They don't realize what is happening. He is recording the past. When you read Genesis, you're not reading a, a word or word commentary of what happened at the different ages. You are reading what God revered to there in Genesis, what God made known to Moses, and he recorded it for us. And we realize this if we look and, and, and look at God's word when it talks about what we are to do. In Romans chapter 15, verse 4, I love this because... It tells us, it says, the things were written beforehand was written for our, for our learning. We could say, some even say knowledge. It was written for us to know about God, to know about the wisdom of God, the, the love of God, and how God expects his people to have faith and how he expects his people to obey through all ages. We learn all of this from the, from the Old Testament. We can learn, like we've said, that the Sabbath was given to those people, not to their fathers. That all the laws was not given, but was given to to them. You know, we think about that, uh, that some of the law, when you look at the, the law that was given to Mount Sinai, they didn't even have a law against uh, brothers and sisters, blood relation, marrying. Yes. Somebody said, well, yes, that's always been. No, it hadn't always been the case because Abraham married his half-sister. Abraham married his sister. So <gasps> wasn't that wrong? It was later, but it wasn't at that time because the law had not been given to Abraham. The, the, lay, the law of Moses was not given to Moses. Isn't that surprising? <laughs> the law of Moses wasn't given until the time of Moses. And in that we read about, yes, the Sabbath. The Sabbath was important. It was something for them. It was something that was given for them to do. Now, in the book of Galatians, and I'd like for you to look there in the book of Galatians, chapter 3. Galatians, there in chapter 3, in verse 19, we find these words. It says, what purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Now, at seed, we read in this book and all through the Bible, that seed is Jesus Christ. The law, the Sabbath, and everything was made, was given 
to fulfill until the seed, Jesus Christ, was to come. Now, after Jesus Christ came, there in the book of Acts, the, the, the temple was still in service. The Jews were still worshiping God. Uh, and Christians was coming out. And there was Christian and Jews. And, and yes, God, I, it may shock people, but I think that the Jews worshiped God the way that God had wanted them to. They didn't stop, but some of them had the temple, and then they had Jesus. And what was they to do? That was confusing to them. But then all of a sudden, Paul and Silas went out and others, and they taught these Gentiles. <laughs> what was they going to do? What was they going to tell the Gentiles to follow? The, the gospel and the law? What? Well, we can see in Acts 15. I think it's wonderful there in Acts chapter 15. We find where there, what happened. Look, let's start there in Acts 15 and uh, 23. We're going to start reading. 15 and 23. And they said they wrote this letter by them. That is the apostles, the elders, and the brethren. It said to the brethren who are of the Gentiles at Antioch and Syria. It said, since we have heard that some of you went out from us, have troubled you with words, unsettling your, your soul, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such command. It seems good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you, uh, our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who has risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you should abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourself from these, you will do well for well, for farewell, farewell. This is all. You know, if the Sabbath was so important, why wouldn't it have been at least somewhere on the list of things that they were? He said, no, you are not to do that. You are to, these are the things that we are to follow that of, was of the old. Not to keep all the burdensome of the law. Why? Because nobody could keep the law but Christ himself. But we do not have that law. Why? Because in Hebrews 8 verse 13, it was ready at the time of Hebrews to vanish away. The temple was about to be destroyed. The Jewish worship of the Old Testament has not existed since 70 AD because it cannot exist. There's no temple. There's no priesthood. There's no family records. There's no altar. It cannot exist. That's why in Hebrews 8 and 13 it says, That which is was is ready to what? Vanish away. Today we are not under the old law. We could not be. We are under the law of Christ. We are under the New Testament. And we are not bound by the rules of the red heifer, the Sabbath, or any of the other rites and ceremony of the old. May the blood of Christ save you. And may the grace of God show you his way. God be with you. Amen.